Hello and welcome back to Azure Tor Terraformer. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a little bit of a short episode just to introduce some concepts to folks that may be new to Terraform uh, syntax and uh, the HashiCorp language in general. Today I want to talk about resources and data sources. So in Terraform, um, we have a resource which is just provisioning something new. When you run Terraform Apply, Terraform is going to go and try and create that resource out in whatever cloud that, or whatever provider, however that provider creates that thing, it's going to go try and create that thing. Uh, a data source is just something that's existing. Um, so it, if uh, you need to, if it's already been provisioned, maybe by Terraform, maybe by uh, you know somebody, you know, a portal jockey, right? Um, click clicking around in the portal, um, they, you know, however it's created, you can go reference it from your existing Terraform projects using a data source reference. Um, that can be extremely useful, like if you have an existing VNet or subnet that you want to tap into and deploy stuff to, you can go grab that resource using a couple of key values and get its resource ID um, that you can use as input into the actual resources that you want to provision, like your VMs or whatever it may be. Um, so yeah, uh, so let's let's look at that and um, the differences between how those two are done. I've got a little sample here going, um, and I'm just going to start off by declaring my first resource, um, and this time I'm going to declare um, a random string. Uh, I've done this before. The declaration syntax for a block in Terraform follows this this pattern, I think, pretty much uniformly. Um, first, you define the block type, so it's a resource block. Then, then you define the type of resource. In this case, I'm going to do um, just a random string. And then you define the name of the resource, and I'll just call this main. Now, each resource implements its own, has its own implementation. That means it has its own input uh, parameters. It has its own required or optional fields that you can set, and you can find all that stuff in the documentation. We've used this before. Now, you'll notice um, when I declare uh, an input parameter to my random string, I usually use like these two spaces here. This is just a convention. If you use like a Terraform linter, um, it'll like automatically you know format it this way, but this is just by convention. Uh, the compiler really doesn't care. Um, in fact, the compiler might even be okay with, you know, this. It's going to look really ugly, um, but I could potentially just put it all on one line. Uh, it may not get happy if I have two of them on one line, but uh, actually, it, let's, let's run Terraform Validate, just see if it likes that. Validate. Yeah, it's kind of pissed off. So I guess you got you got to have it got to have it on a new line. It can't be on um, that. So that is an important thing. Um, again, I follow those conventions, so I don't really run into this. Oh, I got to run Terraform in it. Hmm. All right, let's, let's, let's test that again, shall we? Yeah, see, it's still, it's still got a squiggly, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to run into this problem, right? Yeah. So it's got to be on a new line. So that is not a convention thing. How many spaces is definitely a convention thing. And then special, I'm going to set to false. Now, another convention thing, okay? You're, you're never going to, never, never going to, the compiler's not going to complain about this, but, um, and this is kind of a unique Terraform thing. I, I don't think I've ever seen a language where this is a convention, but it is in Terraform. Um, and, I, and I like it. It's one of those conventions that I like. I, I still struggle with the, um, you know, I'm a C sharp guy by, you know, uh, old school C sharp guy. So for me, the cur seeing a curly brace right there is uh, unnatural. I'm used to seeing it down there like that. But, you know, I'm sure the Java people are happy and screaming their heads off at me. But um, this convention is to is what I call the scrimmage line. And basically, it's lining up the equal signs, which, you know, when you have a declaration, um, you line up the equal signs. Now, this convention kind of breaks down when you get into more complex implementations. But I like it in that it keeps, um, you know, it, it, it makes, it, it follows the natural gaze of your eye as you're reading this. Um, so you can, you can very quickly, like, just gaze down the list of um, uh, 
variables that are being uh, input parameters are being specified here and then you can go look at the values very easily and it's not all jaggedy um, which um, is very nice so I, I do like that um, but the important thing here is the resource block so that's the block we're defining a block in Terraform everything's a block a block consists of a block declaration right here and then open curly close curly that's a block um, sometimes your resources even have nested blocks and we'll get into that later um, we're not going to dally into resources that have nested blocks here um, but yeah basically everything's a block so this is a block um, the block type is resource um, resource the resource block type uh, takes the next operator is going to be the resource type and then the next operator is the, na the name or the reference name of this resource. Um, so if we want to go access this from somewhere else, I'm just going to declare an output. I'm going to call this the um, the rando. Ooh, I don't want double quotes. Don't need double quote. I'll just call this rando. Then I'll set the value equal to. Now I want to I want to go get the value of my random string off of that resource. So the way that I do that, whenever you're referencing a resource, you have to go random string dot main and then dot the property so notice I'm, I'm using the the resource type and then a dot operator and then the, the the resource name which I called it main and then we've got some IntelliSense here because I have the Terraform extension installed and you can see these are actual properties I can get the ID doesn't really matter with the random string but what really matters for random string is the result. And so there we go. Now I'm going to I'm going to output my random string result as this output variable called rando and we're we're having a good day. So that's how you reference a resource. Now, working with a data source. So resources are all about all about creating something new. Um, a data source is about referencing something existing. Um, so before we do that, I'll, I'll just create a, another another one right here. This is called this is a, a resource group, and I'm just going to use my random string. Now you'll notice here I'm referencing the random string, and I'm using string interpolation. It's a fancy word for string concatenation. So you can do inline string concatenation. So here's my string right here. It goes from open quote open double quote to close double quote. Um, and inside here, this is all string constant until I get to this special um, operator here, dollar open curly. Dollar open curly basically says, hey, start and expect an expression inside here. And this expression can be anything, right? So I can, um, this can be pretty complex as long as it can be on one line. I clearly I can't do blocks and things like that. Um, but if I, if I have other uh, Terraform functions that I want to run, um, like I'm pretty sure trim would work because it's just taking in a string and outputting a string like that's no problem so I can take in uh, I can take in a function this expression is evaluating everything that's inside the curlies right so I've got my reference to the random string dot main dot result I'm passing that into the trim function and then that's returning a string that has the white space trimmed off the edges of it right um, and so that's how we reference a resource using string interpolation. Now, if I want to reference, if I, if I want the name just to literally be like, I don't want this RG. I, I don't, you know, even want like, uh, you know, any string constants in here. I can just take the random string result and I can get rid of the double quotes altogether and I can just pass in that string. Um, now the name of the name of this resource group won't follow my naming conventions. It won't have the RG, but it but it'll just have this random string value as the resource name, right? So if I run Terraform apply, auto approve, it uh, I probably need to set the location. I probably need to declare variables. Just do that real quick. There we go. Should be good. May have to run init again. 
should be good. We'll see. Ooh, that's hot. There we go. So we've got my resource and you can see that my resource group name is literally 8LS0NSBF, right? So I just, just took the random string, put it in there. Um, again, so I don't need the double quotes. Don't need the double quotes. If I'm just taking in a string and that's it from some other variable, however I get that variable, um, you know, if it's a reference to some other object, um, as long as it's a string, I don't need to do nothing. Um, string interpolation allows me to embed, you know, string constants in there. And if I do that, then I have to use the string interpolation expression syntax, which is this dollar open curly. And there you go. So now I've got that in there and I can rerun apply. Right. And it's going to delete my resource group and recreate it with the RG attached. Now, um, another thing, another block that I've got is a locals block and the locals block you've seen me use this in other in other episodes but here I'm just gonna create an, a variable called name a local variable it's gonna be called EP 10 and now I'm gonna reference this local in my resource group name um, and so here I'm just gonna say uh, this expression I'm gonna say local dot name and so now I've got this expression here and I'm I've got two expressions that are just concatenated using string interpolation. Um, I could I could add some extra string stuff in here. So now I've got RG hyphen EP10 hyphen random string, and that that should be pretty good. So now you can see it's trying to get rid of the old resource group and give it a new resource group name using the RG dash, and we'll let that complete. And while it's doing that, I'm just going to declare a new output and I'm going to call this my RG ID. This is my resource group ID. And I'm, I'm going to reference my re Azure RM resource group. I'm going to say Azure RM resource group dot main dot ID. And now we're going to have another output called one called rando that has my random string. We're going to have another one uh, that has my resource group ID. And you'll get to see what that resource group ID looks like. Um, and one of the really nice things why the data source um, is so useful, especially in Azure, is because Azure has a pretty sophisticated provider framework in, in the Azure Resource Management API, um, which is really cool. But that generates really ridiculously long um, unique IDs for stuff. Um, whereas in other platforms like AWS, they have like these ARNs, which are basically GUIDs, essentially, without the hyphens and the curlies. Um, uh, but it's just like a random string of characters um, to uniquely identify an item within AWS. But in Azure, a resource ID is a concatenation. It's like a fully qualified path to that thing, starting with a subscription then going to the resource group, then going to the provider of the actual Azure resource, Cosmos DB, SQL DB, whatever, um, and then the name, of the unique identifier of that resource within that provider. So um, you get really long resource IDs. So it's not fun. Um, if you've ever done ARM, to there, and there it is, there's my really long thing. And I'm only going to the resource group level. Just imagine like after this, you got another slash and you got a provider name and then you got a provider ID and all that stuff. So it gets a little crazy really quick. Um, so now um, that that's one of the nice things of using per particularly for Azure is using these data resources is I can look up this resource ID for an existing resource group without having to concatenate all this nasty. Okay. So um, just by declaring a, a data resource, so again, data, a data is some, a data source is an existing thing that's already been provisioned outside of Terraform. Um, and so I'm going to declare that by, instead of using a resource block, it's a data source block and the data source block name is data. Uh, not a huge fan of this, but that's what it is. 
could be worse. I guess it could be like data underscore source or something like that. Data is more concise. I'm not going to judge. Okay. And so now I'm going to have another, I'm going to have a reference to an Azure RM resource group. Now to look something up, an existing item, oftentimes in Azure, you're looking up things like a SQL DB or a VNet or something like that. Um, and anything that you're trying to look up, you know, you're going to have to, there's going to be a certain number of parameters that are going to be required in order to triangulate to that thing. Um, for a resource group, it's pretty simple. Um, the only required field is the name of the resource group. And so I'm just going to go grab, um, I'm going to go look at some of my other resource groups that are out here, just grab a reference to one of them. Okay. So I'm just going to grab the, uh, can I copy pasta today? There we go. That's it. So now I've got my existing thing. And how do we reference a data source? It's a little bit different than um, a RG2 ID. Um, it's a little bit different than a resource, which is, in my, in my opinion, a little bit counterintuitive. So the way you do this is um, you, you have to pre prefix you, you reference a data source the exact same way you'd reference a resource, but you prefix it with the data. So you go data dot type Azure RM, oops, resource group existing. So notice I've got the data dot prefix, the resource type dot the reference name. Okay. And now I'm going to access a property on the reference name. Okay. And now we're going to run auto auto approve. I should really, this should be pretty Insta. Um, unless I have to drop create again, I might have to drop create because of the EP 10 thing. No, 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 no. I already ran, I already ran apply. So we should be good. So now you'll see, we're going to output the resource ID of this resource group. Um, that that's existing that we're not creating. We're going to output the resource ID of the resource group that we created and they'll be side by side. And there you go. And so you can see how this is a little bit more concise than a uh, doing a bunch of gymnastics, like concatenating, getting the subscription ID, concatenating these, like these crazy, you know, uh, URL, URL paths in there, concatenating a resource group ID in there. You know, just grabbing this thing and then now you can just pass it around like using the data reference, the data source reference, right? So it's a pretty, pretty useful thing. So I hope this kind of clears up some of the syntax, you know, number one about the two most important blocks when you're using Terraform, a resource block and a data source block, uh, how you use those, what they do, how you reference those blocks after you've declared them. Um, and yeah, I hope, and, and also we, d we delved into how to use locals as well. So I hope you find this useful. If you're like me and you started using Terraform and you came from a different language, maybe Java or C sharp or Python or something like that, um, Terraform's a little different. Um, and so I, I hope this kind of help, helps you navigate some of that syntax so you can get used to the, used to the quirks of the language. It's really, once you get used to it, it's very concise, concise, makes a lot of sense. Um, and it's, it's a blast to work with. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a like, um, and su hopefully subscribe if you're enjoying the channel, um, and hit those notifications. So, you know, when my next video drops, thanks a lot and see you next time on Azure Terraformer. Thanks.